Well, what's up again there guys, Brian here at 3TR, here to present you my next movie review, and this time I'm giving you my thoughts on the sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy, simply titled Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Now, um, this one has James Gunn coming back to direct, and pretty much the entire, or most of the cast from the first movie uh, reprised their roles with a few new additions and new characters being introduced. And the plot for Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is actually a bit too simple because there's really not much plot. All that happens is that this takes place after the events of the first film and let's just say that Rocket Raccoon does something that kind of gets the Guardians in trouble and then all of a sudden Peter's father shows up who happens to be this giant living planet and the team is pretty much forced to have to split up and that's really all I want to say because that's really there are, it is to say, uh, because there's really not much plot, which is kind of one of a, not much of a negative, but something that did kind of bother me. And I do want to say that overall, I did really enjoy this film by the end, but I can't say that it was really as good as the first Guardians of the Galaxy, which in my opinion was almost flawless because going to that film, I didn't really know what to expect. I was like most people that didn't really know too much about the Guardians of the Galaxy and I ended up absolutely loving that film. So going into this one, it tries to repeat some of the same beats. And I think that kind of holds it back a little bit because I've seen it already done once in the first film. So I kind of want to see what they did by taking these same components and just doing something different with it. And they absolutely do succeed in that fashion because as opposed to the first film, which was really spent most of the time having to just have the Guardians together to pretty much build up that character, uh, that team dynamic, this one forces the team to have to split into their own arches, and it allows them to develop on their own, which was something I was I very much appreciated. Uh, another thing that I also really, really liked is that this movie had a lot of heart, which I was not expecting because, I mean, this far into these Marvel movies, you don't expect them to have much heart. They kind of are basic generic action films and so to tell a type of story that has a real serious family dynamic but doesn't quite beat you over the head like you know the fast films do was something I was very very surprised about. Uh, I would say that performance wise everyone really does a great job with their characters however by far the standout performance of this film which is probably the, the main reason that I'm going to go back and see this at least two or three more times is Michael Rooker's performance as Yondu. Um, he is absolutely incredible in this film, and I would probably say this is probably the best performance I've seen from him in anything he's been in, either in movies or in television. He really brings a lot out of this character that I didn't particularly care much about in the first film. But by the end of this film, he not only was a stand-up performance, he without question became my favorite character in this entire Gardens of the Galaxy storyline and I would have loved to see him have his own film maybe down the road but you know who knows what will happen. Uh, I think that the visuals of this film are very very well done. There's a lot of bright colors, there's some, some amazing visuals. I would suggest that you could see this in 3D and it might enhance your experience. Uh, another thing that I think that this movie also gets right, which was also present in the first film, is that the, the level of comedy. There is a good amount of comedy, and there's a great amount of also chemistry between specific characters. I think that Kurt Russell and Chris Pratt uh, really play off each other. They are both very charismatic uh, actors, and they have amazing chemistry on, on screen. They even have this really, really great scene where they're kind of playing a catch, but in a kind of a special way, which I absolutely loved. Um, however, uh, if there's one major flaw that I did have with this film is that it did not feel like it was really connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, I understand that one of the biggest flaws that I've had with all these films up to date is that they spend too much time setting up the events of the next film and don't spend enough time uh, trying to make the best film that they can in the present. But this movie makes absolutely no attempt on adding anything going into Infinity War, which we all know is coming. Uh, the one thing that Guardians of the Galaxy 1 did was they did introduce another Infinity Stone. And even though that really wasn't a major plot point, I mean, I guess you could say it was, it did explain as for why these characters will play a part in Infinity War. This movie does not do that at all. You literally could say it feels like it's part of its own universe and has nothing to do with the cinematic universe on itself. Even the, the end credit scenes do nothing 
to add to the next movie. I mean, no introduction of, of Panther, nothing about Spider-Man. It does nothing. It all simply adds up to the fact that we know we are going to get a Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which I am pumped up to see, but when you're part of a cinematic universe and you have these characters that you know are going to be part of a much bigger storyline, you need to explain or at least add some element. Don't dedicate a big part of your movie, but just give me one slither explaining why they will continue to be a big part in the upcoming storyline. And I don't think that this movie did that at all. So I will say this, between these two films, between Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and Volume 2, I would say that the first one is a better film, but because of how much heart that this movie has and how it is able to take these same components that we did have in the first film and do something very, very different and unique that I wasn't expecting, I would see this one first before seeing Guardians of the Galaxy 1 again. So overall, if I had to give Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 a rating, I will give it a B plus. You don't need me to tell you to see it because chances are you've already seen it already, probably seen it multiple times, so get out there and see it a third time or fourth time if you haven't already because it is absolutely well worth your time and worth multiple viewings. So if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe to track me in my future movie and video game reviews. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome, and I will see you next time.